Friday evening and I am in Paris. I am so, so happy to be here. I gotta tell you guys though, I am exhausted. I had the longest travel day. I got to the airport early yesterday, yesterday. Um, and <laughs> I think that's what it was. And uh, I, they put me to an earlier flight because they were afraid I might not, I wouldn't have enough time in between my connection in Atlanta which was great, but then I got to Atlanta and my flight from Atlanta to Paris was delayed by an hour and it actually ended up taking off like almost an hour and a half, hour 45 later than originally scheduled. So it took off almost at midnight and I didn't sleep at all on the plane. I tried, I like had my eyes closed with the sleep mask on and everything for like two hours and didn't get a wink of sleep. Uh, I'm doing okay, but I am, I am very tired and it is cold and very rainy here right now like just like kind of dumping rain honestly it's in the mid 30s right now uh which i'm not entirely prepared for wardrobe right wardrobe wise and like looking out the window at the rain just now i was like i think there's snow mixed in with that so between being tired and the weather and knowing that i still have six full days here I am giving myself permission to take it easy tonight, stay at the apartment. I stopped by Monopri, I picked up some cheese, I picked up a baguette, I got some wine. I am kind of set for the evening and I'm just going to sit and probably journal and make plans for the rest of my week. Now that I'm here and we're closer to the days, the forecast is a little bit more predictable. Uh, so I can kind of like map out what days I'll do what. And yeah, I'm just giving my per myself permission to kind of like take it easy. This is part of why I like staying at Airbnbs is that I can like make dinner and like have food and stuff. And I don't know, just kind of feel like I'm living in the place. Uh, you know, I've, I've been here before. I studied abroad here in college. So I was here for four months. I, I basically lived here and which is so weird to say out loud. That's again, the kind of experience that I want to have while I'm here on this trip. I've done all the touristy things in the past, so I don't really need to do a lot of that stuff. I'm absolutely going to go to some museums and like go see some sites and stuff. Um, but I just really want to like experience being here. That is the plan for now. And I can't wait to just get out and explore Paris for the rest of this week and uh, share it with y'all. So that is what I've got for tonight. Let me sh actually show you guys my uh, a little tour of my apartment. So the apartment is on the sixth floor in France. That's the fifth floor. Uh, very confusing, but there's ground floor, then first floor, and then it keeps going. So um, quite a lot of stairs to get up here. This is the little entryway foyer kind of area. She's got these cute lights up here, which I just think is a fun little touch. And then as you walk into the right, there's sort of like a little foyer area around the corner. Here is where the toilet is. This is very common in Europe um, that the toilet is in a separate room from the rest of the bathroom. Um, pretty modest. Walking into here is the bedroom. Now the owner of the Airbnb like lives here most of the time. So this cabinetry here is not available to use um, her belongings are stored in here, but that's okay. And just a modest little bed. Um, when I first came in here, uh, it was oriented the other way with the pillows um, up at the other end, but I am a basic bitch and I want to wake up to that view, which we will get to in a moment. Excuse the creaky floors. It's obviously an old building, a uh, very old building, classic Parisian apartment and the floors are old wood and they creak. So from the bedroom here to the right is the bathroom. So this is where the tub shower is the sink. There's also a washing machine, which is really great. I took a shower when I first got here. I could not figure out how to switch it from the handheld shower head to the like rain shower head. So we may need to continue troubleshooting. Um, again, she's got storage here, but that's her own stuff. But yeah, it's got everything I need. Very typical of a Parisian apartment. And then as you walk through the bedroom, this is where the quirkiness of a pair's apartment comes in. You walk through the bedroom to get to the kitchen, which is a little funny, but that's okay. Um, it's small, 
but it's mighty. A little echoey in here, obviously. Uh, there is a stove and oven here, sink, everything to wash dishes with. Um, over here, all of the kitchen cookware, cutlery, all that kind of stuff is stored in this uh, dresser unit down here. There's plenty of glassware available. There is a very fancy espresso machine, which I said I know how to use, but I don't. So that should be an interesting experience because I will want some coffee. We'll see how it goes. There's a kettle in one of these drawers down here. Little fridge, typical tiny <laughs> European uh, refrigerator. At least it's actually a full size and not like a mini fridge. So we have a microwave, everything that you need basically. Um, window out to the view. And then as you come back through the apartment, back towards the front hallway. The true piece de resistance is this uh, beautiful living room. I just think that this is the cutest room. So we've got what appears to be probably a futon here. Little shelf with decor up above. Cute little rattan cabinet. There's a matching one on the other side. We've got some plants out. Obviously the view, which again, we'll get to in a moment. Love this little like chaise lounge with the built-in book uh, bookshelf behind it. Like I'm definitely gonna sit here and like read or journal or whatever. Hello, hi, it's me. Uh, cute little fireplace situation, mirror, all of that. And then over on this side is a little dining table with a bench and a couple of chairs. So this would be a great place for a couple to stay, um, but it's also perfect for just one. And now the thing that I love the most <laughs> is this classic, Parisian rooftop view. Uh, this actually looks out onto a courtyard down below. Very typical of like French buildings to have these courtyards. So you kind of walk almost into the courtyard and then uh, enter the building and go up the stairs. But I just like can't get enough of this. It looks so romantic right now with the rain. Oh, I'm in love. tell you it's been a little intimidating like doing this by myself like deciding what I'm gonna do from moment to moment just knowing that I don't really have a huge set plan I also made the mistake of downloading my Google map onto my just my iPad and not my phone I didn't have my iPad with me obviously so I was just kind of playing it by ear a little bit, but I went and had breakfast uh, right on Place des Vosges. Uh, the cafe that I went to, I know that it's a little bit touristy. Uh, I went to Carette, which um, they have a couple locations in town, but it's right on Place des Vosges, which is around the corner from my apartment. And going somewhere that I knew was a little bit touristy felt like a good like step in the right direction for me, considering I'm just like 
very nervous about using my French here. Uh, I've noticed that a lot more has come back to me than I expected, and I have Google Translate on my phone and the whole thing, uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just a little intimidating, and I know that I sound American, and uh, a waiter came up to me at lunch today and like started speaking French, and I had to immediately be like, je suis American, like, <laughs> because I was just so... I don't know. It's just like a little shocking. I'm sure I'll like kind of get the hang of it over the next day or two. But anyway, um, I went to the Picasso Museum, uh, which I had never gone to before, which is so funny because it's very close to where uh, I went to school when I was studying here. Uh, and it's like a popular museum. Uh, two of the floors were closed, but that's okay. It was still, they were discounting the ticket price because of that. And it was still an enjoyable experience. It was also very cold this morning. So I was glad to do that. But contrary to the forecast, there's been no rain today. And actually the sun is out now. And I feel like I've kind of done the things that I needed to do in this part of town in less time than I expected. So I am actually going to wander over towards the other side of the sun, actually see the sun, and uh, I'm going to grab a coffee here in my neighborhood.
Friday evening. I am getting ready to get a drink and some dinner. I didn't have the best night last night. I, I came around and I'm good now, but um, I was so tired when I got back from my day. I finally like got up somewhat of the energy to go to dinner, but I hadn't made a plan ahead of time. And so by the time I left the apartment, it was like nine o'clock and I walked around the neighborhood, but everyone else had already like moved on from dinner to drinks. And I just felt awkward and I don't know, I got very in my head about it. And it was just one of those like weird little moments of like solo travel where like, if I was with someone else, I wouldn't care at all to go into a restaurant and order dinner uh but to do it by myself i don't know it just i know that no one really cares but it was a saturday night at nine and it was like everyone was with their friends and i just felt a little lonely in that moment all good though i did i had such a wonderful day i uh, went to the musee rodin and that was beautiful. I tried to go there when I was in college and the day that I carved out to do it, I got there and didn't realize that it was closed that day. So that was on me. It was a beautiful day to do that because there's like the gardens and everything. Uh, and then I walked to a boulangerie and I got a sandwich and a little raspberry tart and took that over the Champ de Mars, which is the big lawn park area out leading up to Eiffel Tower. So I sat and ate my lunch under the Eiffel Tower, which was incredible. After that, I went and I walked over the Berheikam. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Berheikam, I think. Uh, anyway, that bridge. And it's the one that's in uh, Inception. And went and ate my tart just on the banks of the Seine, like right under the Eiffel Tower. It was just an incredible little moment. I was so happy made my way over to the Arc de Triomphe, uh, which was, again, lovely, wonderful. It was my first time going up the Arc, and out of the three now, like, monuments or buildings that I've gone up to the top of in the city, that's definitely my favorite. A lot of stairs, but the views up there are unmatched. Uh, the view of the Eiffel Tower from up there is incredible. Still have never gone up the Eiffel Tower. I did do a little swing by the Georges Sank Hotel, which is now a Four Seasons, uh, but it's the one that is featured in the movie French Kiss. It's my mom and my like favorite movie, and I've seen it so many times, and so I told her, I was like, I'm gonna make the voyage, I'm going to go see the Hotel Georges Sank, uh, and yeah, I felt really poor walking by it. That's all there is to it. Anyway, I came back here, every bone in my body is in pain, severe pain <laughs> from all of the walking that I've done. Over the last two days, I've walked over 15 miles, uh, even with like comfortable sneakers on, like I am in pain. But um, yeah, I'm starting to get hungry. I'm ready to just go out, hopefully find a terrace uh, to sit out on and get a drink, get some food. I'm a first table I see out on the sidewalk, I am snagging it. I'm still...